my brain doesn't stop ever. What I love about biking is that I just like, I don't have, my brain does not have the ability to think about anything else. If I'm not thinking about what's coming up right in front of me, I'm off the trail. It's just having that brief reprieve and being able to just go for a bike break and it actually feeling like a break on the mind because I can't think of anything else. My name is Lydia White and I'm a graduate student at the University of New Brunswick in St. John and right now I am wrapping up my master's thesis and continuing on with my PhD there where I mostly focus on lobster fishery ecology and lobster biology. I'm Marie-José Malte and I'm a technician at the University of New Brunswick. I work for two professors and mostly in marine biology so one, one part of my job is biodiversity. The other part is uh, to work on lobster. So I coordinate the field work and I go in the field as well. This is a place that uh, we're very familiar with because we are marine biologists and we're always on wharf somewhere. <laughs> so the winters, well, I used to ski and I used to, you know, do snowmobile and do all these uh, uh, sports. When we discovered fat biking with studs in Rockwood and elsewhere in the, in the region, we uh, were like, wow, now we love winter just because yeah. of this. Before it was like, I can't wait for spring to take my bike out. If it's a trail that you would normally go to in the summertime, it's like a totally whole different. new place. Everything looks different, it's all covered, and when it's really nice and the, like the snow is covering the trees, it's like a winter wonderland. It keeps you biking, so you're yeah. ready for the summer, and you know, your legs are ready for spring and, and you're still strong, so it's so much nicer to start back on your mountain bike. You had all this exercise, you're ready for climbs and you're still strong and Fit. For a fat bike, uh, you need a specific wheel, of course, that, you know, it's a little wider. They have a better friction. This type of tire, you actually stud them the way you want. You buy them without the stud, and then you can buy the type of stud that you like. We only have four pounds in these tires, and that makes it much easier because then the whole tire has a grip on the ice. When I first started mountain biking, I started in the winter time and MJ told me I needed to get studded tires. So uh, that's what I asked my dad for my Christmas present. My dad's a mechanic and my brother's a mechanic. So uh, my brother had to go looking for these tires and the first thing he said when I got them for Christmas was, you know, I could have got you four car tires for cheaper than what I got you for these two mountain bike tires. And I was like, yep, that's <laughs> the fun part. There are trails that are more open. This is totally different than, than other trails where we go. These flat sections are like uh, double track, wider trail can be good if you're looking for uh, like a calmer stretch or something like that or want to go more leisurely. You still need quite a bit of uh, technique to uh, climb and to descend as well. I do prefer the single track because, you know, there's always something new coming around the corner. <laughs> Lots of rocks and roots that are covered with ice. You need to have your head in the game, looking ahead of you, because if you veer off that trail just a little bit, like, you're gone. You're off the trail, you're off your bike, typically. <laughs> Sometimes you lose your wheel beside the trail and yeah, it stops yeah. and you don't. Just be aware that there are some trails that ATVs and snowmobiles are only allowed to be used on. So just be sure that you're aware that there is a chance you might not be allowed to be on that trail as a mountain biker. So a good rule of thumb before you're going to check out any new trail is to do your due diligence to figure out whether you should be on that trail as a biker, not on private land that you do not have access to. It's the winter time and the maritime winter in New Brunswick can be cold. 
So you want to make sure you're keeping yourself warm, uh, but the issue we kind of run into is that once you start moving and things start warming up, you'll start to sweat really quickly and you'll get too hot and want to almost immediately take layers off. So our tip is usually dress about 10 degrees warmer than what you think it's going to be. If I'm going out, I always wear some sort of buff or hat around my ears to keep the ears warm and then some sort of similar gaiter around your face. In the chest area, I'll always have some sort of uh, face layer underneath, whether it's a merino or something similar. Uh, and then I usually try and keep a down layer on top to really keep the uh, central parts warm. I wear snow pants with actually uh, an under layer uh, as well. And I have heated socks uh, just because I like it. It's just that your feet don't move as much than when you're walking, same with the hands you're really crisp, like you're really tense on this, so circulation is not the same, so you get cold at the extremities. Yeah, if you have a pair of hikers, like they'll, they usually have good enough grip that for winter biking, it's fine, and they will keep your feet a lot warmer than yes, that's the anything thing. else. Crampons, it's good to have studs, but as soon as you put a foot down, if you don't have crampons on uh, really icy uh, trails, well then, you have no grip, so you fall. Uh, the social aspect of it, I think, is like a major uh, aspect of mountain biking, and it's a major aspect. Like for us, like MJ said, like we work together, and her husband is my supervisor. But we can just be like, "Hey, let's go for a bike ride after work," or "Hey, it's a random Friday. MJ's not working. She'll come to the office and say, let 'Let's go for a bike ride.'" <laughs> so the social aspect is always there. Um, and then we also have other friends that uh, also bike with us. And the proportion of biking versus talking that we do when we're all mountain biking <laughs> together is a little bit questionable because you're stopping and then it turns into 20 minute conversations. But it just kind of adds that extra element. And like we go on mountain biking trips, like we'll plan vacations around going somewhere to mountain bike to try a new trail. And it's a good way to discover the province. All these trail systems, you just see a different world because mountain bikers are a bit, you know, different people, I would say, taking risks and, yeah. <laughs> I think everywhere we've been, the social aspect is really important and usually you have, you know, craft beers that are always part of the trip and testing beers and, and yeah. stuff like that. We like to say that we kind of do mountain biking to deserve those beers or to yes. earn those. The main thing I would recommend is like in your area looking to see if there are already people doing it or groups that, or groups that are organized doing it or places that are doing lessons just to kind of try it and go with people. A lot of times there are kind of like rides and you can find more like recreational style rides so just going out to go out and have fun and meet new people and those are usually very welcoming. 